Hi and welcome to Transform Camps 2020. This year our theme is Arise and Shine coming from Isaiah chapter 60 uh, verse 1. And you know our theme is leading us to a place where as young people how do we fill the gaps we're in in society and become agents of transformation. Uh, my name is James Wanjeri and I am very happy this uh, time to be joined on set by one of Kenya's uh, leading entrepreneurs in the space of public relations. Uh, her name is Mary Njoki, but why don't I ask her to just tell us more about herself. Hi Mary. Hi. <coughs> tell us more about yourself. Um, we talked earlier about uh, being an <laughs> entrepreneur. How would you describe yourself uh, in, in, let's say, one sentence? That's a very interesting question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, hmm. I think um, from my name, uh, Adri, Ad, and I think we were having that conversation earlier, where I was telling you when people are going, like when we were talking about uh, loss of weight, and I was telling you when people are going in a certain direction, I usually go the opposite direction. Yeah, yeah. So I describe myself as a rebel, mm -hmm. which I mean, and the name Mary means rebel. Yeah. Um, that uh, not in a bad way, but um, uh, but by God's grace, my life usually goes against the systems and the cultures that have been set by men. Yeah. So that's how my life has been mm -hmm. from when okay. I was young. So you go against the grid. The grid, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good I start. normally. For purposes of people who uh, don't know you or haven't come across uh, what you do, yeah. um, please just kindly share uh, shortly what you do for a living. So um, I run a public relations firm, um, Glasshouse PR. I've been running it for the last eight years. We just turned eight. Um, yeah, so that's what I do, uh, among other things. But that's what um, that's a platform that I use. That's a platform that God has given me. That's what I use. Yeah. 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 Uh, describe public relations for us. W what's that? What what does that look like? I'm sure you've come it's across many misconceptions. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it's very interesting because I didn't know, and it's something we'll uh, go through uh, with you. I did not know what PR was even when I was starting the company. So I remember I would interact with a few friends, and one day a friend told me it's about positioning the brands. Mm. And I was like, wow, that's beautiful and over time i've discovered uh, people describe pr as spinning others describe pr as marketing mm. and over the years and even when we came to the now the kenya industry people were like i do events so i do pr i'm like events and pr are totally different things because yeah. pr is about strategy thinking how you're going to position a brand for, and position a brand in someone's mind mm. and leave an impact there for a long time yeah. so it's about changing ideologies changing policies for me um and uh, when you're positioning of course now because we work a lot we worked a lot with SMEs for them they wanted to be positioned for selling so there are different um, aspect or different ways you can look at it but yeah. um, it's about positioning brands positioning brands yeah and um, in Kenya you are celebrated as one of uh, you know Kenya's young people yeah. who started business at a relatively uh, young age yeah, yeah what was that like for you and be even before you get there mm. describe for me uh, Mary Njoki at 20 years of age can you remember being 20 yes, and what that space was like well as I told you earlier anomaly I finished high school at the age of 16 Wow. So, um, okay. just for our viewers, <laughs> normal people <laughs> finish school at 18. Yes. <laughs> so she has a two year head start. Yeah, so uh -huh. I finished at the age of 16. Then, um, I, c I had a good grade B for yeah. boy. The reason I say B for boy, there's a day I said B, someone had D, not D. Yeah. B. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So B for boy. Yeah. Um, but I grew up, okay, so I grew up in the village. Mm. Um, went to this Which village, if you don't mind? It's called Gararika in Limuru. Limuru. Yes. Okay. So, um, yes, I'm from the village. Mm. I know. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, so 16 years, finished high school. I get a B. We can't afford to go to campus. Mm. People who have C plus and D, whatever they were men mm. when I want to prepare yeah. uh, I had to stay home for one year and then at some point I went to the Kenya, Kenya National Theatre yeah. to try out acting mm. that was interesting anyway <laughs> interesting means it worked or it didn't work <laughs> I was there for three months. Uh, yeah. I was acting. Um, they they gave me two lines. I used to have. <laughs> I was acting like a child. That was very interesting. <laughs> um, then uh, later on, now my mom could afford to uh, to get me to to school. Yeah. I always wanted to study computer science. Um, yeah. And when I was in high school, I took computers. Mm. So and I loved coding. So um, I thought of to study computer science anyway. Mm. So we of course we could not afford. Yeah. And 
it will make sense later mm. but now i could do bit business information technology yeah. so my mom could afford for that it was 5k per month graphics college yeah. that was a lot of mo- like mm. for my mom that was like uh, she had to get a loan and stuff so yeah. um so i went to graphics college for two years did mm. a certificate for bit diploma and then higher diploma mm. so when i finished um now i'm 19 so yeah. Yeah. yeah so when i finished um i what happened um i started uh, since i loved programming i started doing creating some small software and i remember selling a, sofi- a software to someone for 10k <laughs> oh that's a, that was a lot of money at 1920 yeah 10, they never paid me though oh. that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's unfortunate that's, yeah but they ne- to tell me about um i mean you've cleared school you've mm. got the good grade mm. but you have to stay home for a whole year yeah i mean how do you process that how did you deal with that it must be really disappointing. I went to um, to do to to the Kenya National Theatre. It, it was disappointing, but yeah. the best thing about vill- you know when you're growing up in the village, there are people who didn't even go to high school. Mm. So you, you know, encourage to you just encourage yourself with them. But that's I think I don't know. Um, so I what f- are you doing before you go to a Kenya lot of National nonsense? Because yeah. I look at really because I look at that period and I'm like, there are things probably I did or there are things. I mean, just hanging around people who didn't necessarily build who I was. Yeah. Uh, but I think God allowed it for such a time as that because mm. it makes sense later. Mm. Um, yeah, so I didn't do much. I can't say there's anything I did that mm. built my life when I was at home. And then w- when you started doing something, you had a play where you only had uh, two lines. Do you yeah. remember your two lines? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But it was funny. Yeah, so you go, you've, uh, you've done your... Uh, Diploma and higher diploma. Yeah. The one that comes next after that. I start. Uh, I build this thing. As this person tells me he'll pay me ten k. Yeah. He doesn't come the software. through. Yeah. yeah. A software, not a thing. A software. You built and delivered. <laughs> yes. Fully. Yes. And it they didn't v- pay you. V- yeah. Vp dot net like a desktop application. Mm. Um. Then um, what happens after that? Uh. Then someone comes and tells me they are f- they are they are their friend has a software company and they're mm. looking for people to work there. Mm. So I meet this lady in Upper Hill and then she tells me, you can come work for me. Um, and then she tells me, uh, I'm going to pay you 15K. That was like a million dollar. I'm like, what? Like, you that know, I'm like not, three, I'm 19. Three months of school fees. Yeah. Now is one month uh, yeah. salary. Yeah, okay. that was like okay. a million dollar to me, you yeah. know, that particular time. So yeah, I go start working for her. It was, I didn't do any interview. I can't ex- I've never done any job interview in my life. That's mm. another yeah. interesting story. So yeah, st- I start working for her and then she tells me she's going to put me in the production, uh, in the marketing department. Mm. I wanted to go to production. Remember, I have these skills, uh, software, de- like I love software development. Mm. She puts me in marketing and then I, ju- I think I was really mad at her for like a few months, but yeah. later it made sense because mm. now I was taught how to sell. So... She used to, she has a, she, it was a small company. Mm. They were selling websites and softwares. Yes. So what we were to do, we were like, I was a salesperson to go selling websites. Yeah. This is 2009. First you're selling a domain, a website, a software. It's like, I don't know. It's like you're selling virtual reality. Like it's not s- anything that exists at that particular time. Yeah. So I remember I'd walk from one side of town to the other. So you're walking from one door to another. Yeah. And people don't like salespeople. And you're trying, first of all, to introduce to them a concept that they they have no idea mm. about. Mm. Um, so they'll chase you. It was very interesting. Mm. So um, you're selling from door to door. Were there any interesting things that happened in that in that journey? Yes, it was very... There were interesting things that happened yeah. uh, because we used to... When you see any business cards, even now I still have them in the house, like a pack and pack of business cards. When you see business cards, you'd call you'd call the person on the business card. So yeah. one day I called this guy, uh, Mike Moy, um, and then he told me, oh, you're selling websites. Um, come, I want to invite you to, a sp- to an event where you can sell... Um, to more people. Mm. I'm like, that's interesting. What is it called? He's like, um, come tomorrow at Panafric Hotel yes. uh, at 6.30 a.m. Mm. Uh, for a BNI meeting. Yes. Uh, I'm like, oh, that's interesting. I don't know what that is. So I went and told my boss and my boss knew about it. She was like, yeah, you can go. Mm. Yeah, so the next day I'm coming from Limuru in the village. You know, you have to, and you have to be... All the same, you're living at home? Yes. Okay. You have to uh, live, you have to be at Panafric by 6.20 a.m. Yes. Yo, like, um, I had to leave, you know those, I used to live with those mamambogas that leave at 3 a.m. Yes. 
uh, from the village going with those matatus. Yeah, going to the market. Yeah, those matatus that stay uh, in the villages and yeah, now they... To take guys to town. To town, yeah. Okay. Like very early in the morning. So I'd leave like at 3 a.m. with those matatus. Mm. And then you get to Panafric, you freshen up and you look like you just come like from around mm. and I you go to the meeting so the first day i went i went to the meeting i don't know people were just impressed i was so young mm. and i knew whatever i was going to sell yeah. and that particular day like we sold like five websites wow. so my my my, <laughs> my boss was very happy with mm. me she was like ah you're going to become a member of bni how many websites were you selling like on a weekly basis i don't know not m not many so remember five, that time you're was a yeah it's a, a big it's deal. a big deal. What is BNI? I know there are people who yeah, it's business don't. networking international. Business networking international. Should we be selling them anyway? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and it's uh, anyway it's business networking international where people come together for breakfast mm. um, and exchange business. I'm 19, so mm. I've gone to this platform. Of course, I'm the youngest in the in their midst. And you've sold five. And I've sold five. Yeah. And it was amazing. So it was amazing. And my boss said I should you know join BNI. So mm. I started joining and growing with it. So why it makes sense, uh, that's where I remember one day, 20, so I was in this company for two years. So I remember in 2010, it's like I got, I got a, a, a light bulb moment when I looked at those people and I'm like, wait, they own small businesses and they're making money. Mm. So it's possible to own a, and there are no more people, you know, like yeah. I'm interacting with them every Wednesday morning. Mm. That's where the entrepreneurship thing came. Because all my life, I, I, first of all, I never thought I'd be an entrepreneur. No one mm. in my family is an entrepreneur. Yeah. Everyone is like, they do professional jobs, etc. So that's how um, my journey began. Wow. So yeah. this is 19... Um, so take us now into the 20 space because so I 20. remember, yeah, that was a question. <laughs> so I turned where were 20. you at 20? Yeah. I turned 20. I mean, B and I, and one guy approached me and he he asked me, "Would you like to come and work for me?" And I'm like, "Yeah, sure." So I just moved and started working for this guy. Mm. So remember, I'm coming from a software company. Yeah. Uh, and I moved to a hardware company. I didn't realize hardware. they were selling this is hardware, computer hardware, comput computer hardware oh, okay, laptops. Okay. Um, I thought you were going to sell cement. And no, 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 <laughs> hardware. <laughs> <laughs> computer hardware. Yeah. So they are selling networking solutions. I don't understand these things. So remember, I so I came from a place where I was the best employee to where I went to this place. I was the worst employee. Mm. So it did a thing for me. Mm. And at the same time, I had joined. Uh, it was. The same time when I started working at Joint K Crew, yeah. so I used to go for Bible study every uh, every Tuesday, yeah. and um, I think that's where also now I'm going to combine the story. Mm -hmm. Also, God started um, helping me or um, uh, teaching me about identity. Mm -hmm. So I'm 20. I'm in this company. I feel so useless because mm -hmm. <laughs> you're not making sales. I'm not making sales. Yeah. Like I feel like, and I w and people say I was poached. The guy is paying me higher. Okay, not mm -hmm. 20k. Yeah. And it was a lot. <laughs> <laughs> From 15 to 20. <laughs> and, yeah. Anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, yeah. So that's where my mind is at. And I remember that time I started um, developing this love for this thing called PR. I'm 20, and I'm trying to figure out the identity thing and. I started liking the idea of PR. So I was mm. wondering, what is PR? What is, uh, is it image consulting? Mm. And funny enough, that particular year, 20, I'm working in this company. Um, I decided to go to Desta University yes. Yes. Uh, to study PR. Mm. Uh, at this particular point now, we could afford um, for me to do part-time classes. Mm. I'm going to work part-time, coming all the way from Limuru. Which uh, is about, uh, you know, for our Ugandan audience, this is about, um, imagine coming from Entebbe to Kampala on a daily basis. That's about the distance, Limuru to Nairobi. Yes, and yeah. also there is the part that it's a village. So mm. when you are light, like you have to go 15 minutes yeah. into... So more kilometers. More kilometers. Mm. Um, so I'm going to work during the day. Yes. Um, I'm going for part-time classes at Desta University. And I'm volunteering at K Crew. Yeah, and maybe I can just step in for uh, our audience who don't know. K Crew is uh, a young, you know, it's a youth-led uh, discipleship space where there's fellowship, yeah. um, Bible study. You said you submit every Tuesday. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'd volunteer for their events um, and all activities that they would have. Mm. Um, so um, at that particular time, I registered a company, an mm. image consulting company. Yeah. 
which uh, I made 500 shillings the whole year. For the entire year? <laughs> yeah, but it had a very funny name. It was not yet time, though. Mm. Um, Would you like to share the name? Or it's, very it's an embarrassing Diva detail? Diva Image Experts. It Diva Image Experts. Yeah, it's okay. very, <laughs> very embarrassing. But it will make sense why I've brought it now. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I start, you know, figuring life, and I'm like, I feel like I'm enjoying what I'm doing at Kekru more mm. that w than what I'm doing at work, at work yeah. you know. And I'd look forward to Tuesdays or to weekends uh, where we have events, mm. or you know. And 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 I didn't realize I was just being attracted to the PR aspect of whatever mm. PR is. So Kekru was also for you important because it gave you an opportunity, space rather, yeah, um, to get to participate yeah. uh, in the event. Yes. And I know there are many people uh, yeah. who might be watching mm -hmm. and uh, maybe they're also getting these opportunities to serve in church yeah. and in fellowship groups like these. Yeah. Uh, I mean, would you like to encourage them about uh, what impact that had for you? Yeah, I think sometimes, and I've noticed in our generation, we are so entitled and we want to be paid or to... to, to uh, or we feel like we have to be, it's God who rewards, number one. Mm. Number two, I remember I volunteered for K-Crew for four years. I think um, the journey for K-Crew or rather volunteering for K-Crew was very important. When I look back and I did that for four years, mm. uh, it was important because there are people I met who are also still very close to me. Uh, there are people who are now in spaces that helped me re later when I started the PR agency. Mm. So when you volunteer, like it's not, do it, uh, especially when you're young, you learn a lot. Mm. You meet a lot of people, so, yeah. yeah. Arise and shine. Okay. Mm. No, so uh, you're done. This is at K-Crew. You're discovering that you actually like the events and yeah. the PR side of things. Yeah. So what does that do to you, uh, considering that work for you is also terrible at the moment? I was like the worst employee um, at the company that yes. I went to work with, the mm. second company, mm. and I didn't want to quit. Mm. But I was like, man, I'm doing nothing here. Like, I'm enjoying what I'm volunteering more than what I'm doing here. Mm. Anyway, so one day, uh, January 2012, <laughs> we were supposed to go back to work. And then, the, the you know, small companies have issues. Then our boss wrote a message and said, this person, Marin Joki, da 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 da, do not report to work tomorrow. You're fired over text. <laughs> yeah, uh, it was very <laughs> funny because I was inside, I was very happy. I mm. remember, I was like, yeah, it's not me who quit, he's the one who let me go. Yeah, yeah um, it was very w interesting. So, a few days later, uh, there's this lady uh, I had met uh, through K Crew. We had gone, we used to go for missions mm. uh, in high school. So, there's this lady I had met, and I told her I'm interested in image consulting and PR. Yeah. So, um, immediately I was fired. I called her, I'm like, hi, uh, I think I have a presentation on what I can do in your company. So, let me come on Thursday mm. and present it. I remember I was fired on Tuesday. I went and presented on Thursday. On Friday, I had a new job. Ah. So wow, <laughs> that's very lucky. <laughs> I don't think, I think I went, I took the bull by t Anyway, yeah, but I was, won. yeah, <laughs> I, 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 I actually would, when I thought of things, I would go ahead and do them. Mm. So I went and, and presented. I got a job on that Friday and I started working in a PR agency. Okay. Now I was working in a PR agency. I've never worked in a PR agency. D uh, at this time, they are still teaching, I don't know, introduction to maths, introduction to English. And I had to go and Google and learn uh, what exactly is public relations yeah. online. And then I'm talking to people. They mm. are, you know, telling me what PR is. Um, yeah. So uh, I started working in this PR agency. Uh, this is 2012. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So the problem is they also had issues uh, there and they didn't have many employees. So mm. I found myself being the PA, the admin. Mm. Uh, the public relations officer, like so many things. Did, did you by any chance tell them you work well under pressure and you will do any work they give you? No, maybe, I didn't. Maybe but <laughs> okay. but I think God had seen it. God was preparing me yes. for where I was going. Okay. I worked there for five months. Yes. Um, and I remember it was very interesting uh, working there. Mm. And one of the things that encouraged me was one day we had an event and I was told you're handling media relations. And mm. I'm like, what is that? Mm. I went and I was told to do a press release. I'm like, I don't know how to. Anyway, so I Googled. I was able to do a press release. Mm. Um, 
Then I just sent someone I'd met at those K crew and we used to have K crew mad love and all those things. Mm. Uh, I had met someone there so I just I knew they had started working in uh, media. Yeah. So I sent them the press release. Apparently they sent it to so many people mm. because the day of the event uh, the media was there. The mm. client was not even excited about how the event looked like them. They were like, we are on TV. on TV. We're going to be live on TV, you mm. know. And I'm like, wow, this is PR. Interesting. That's mm. how I started understanding PR. Mm. Um, first, you get into a job where you have to work selling websites. Mm. It's not something you'd gone to school for. Mm. After that, you have to sell computer hardware. Mm. Not something you, I think, you're even passionate about. Mm. Um, then after that, you get into what you would have thought was the right job for you mm. d because of the uh, interest that you had. Mm. But even that turns out not to be working. Mm. Uh, Njoki, um, you f your first job is a job in, uh, you know, software, not something you had an interest in. Your second job is in hardware. Uh, you are not, uh, uh, you know, up to the standard that they perhaps wanted. Your third job is in a space, perhaps you feel like, uh, you know, this is more like what I wanted. But even that is not working out well. How instrumental were these experiences in moving you from employment into the space of entrepreneurship? I think every, um, every experience, there's no experience that is wasted. Mm. And I can't, I mean, it's live, it's my story. It's not that I'm just saying words that are there. It's live in my life. Um, after... That after that event, I think um, the company started. Um, they started just having a few issues, mm. and um, I remember now. St this is 2012. I started telling them the future of PR is on content marketing, digital. We need to go digital, mm. and no one was listening to me. And I'd get frustrated because every time I'd come up with new ideas and try to explain to them because I thought they had the resources so we can implement these ideas. Mm -hmm. uh, they were not implementing them. And I remember just one day, which is not, a, it's not an advisable thing to do. One day I just didn't go to work and then I stayed at home. You didn't wait to be fired. <laughs> you just decided you're not standing up. <laughs> the next day I stayed at home. I was just depressed and not depressed, the word depressed, uh, just to be sensitive. Not that I was just like, I wanted these ideas to be implemented and no one was implementing mm. them. No one was listening to No you. one was listening. So I really got frustrated mm. and I, I think I stayed home for four days and then she called me. She's like, ah, what's happening? Um, then she was like, I was like, hey, I'm not coming back. Then she's like, oh, you're not coming back. Oh, okay, cool. And that was it. <laughs> that was it. Um, and that's where my journey for entrepreneurship starts. Mm. Um, and yeah, I was like, I knew um, I was to start a, c um, a company, but I didn't know how. Mm. Remember for, I mean, not four years before, or 2010, I'd registered an image consulting firm. Mm. So my reference was that. So I knew I was supposed to start, but I didn't know how. And I remember going to church uh, that particular time um, and someone from Malawi, came to church and they were praying for people and when he prayed for me he said you don't need special wisdom god has already given you the wisdom to do that which you need to do mm. and that was my encouragement mm. my reference was um i had uh, started um, an image consulting uh, company mm. at in 2010 so um i remember i have a database of people i'd met in bni so i started i came up with a presentation about diva image experts and mm. sent it out to this database mm. i remember some guy called me and, and he's not some guy a very wonderful person mm. it's not <laughs> to call someone some guy uh, a very wonderful person called me and then they're like what is this can you just come straight to my office i help you with branding what kind mm. of a name is this yeah. what kind of graphics are these just come to my office so i went to his office um and then he was like what do you want your company to represent uh and i'm like i wanted to represent clear communication and transparency so we started writing names down and we didn't find any but as i was leaving the room uh he texted me, what about Glasshouse PR? Mm. I'm like, so yeah. that's how you got the name? That's it. Mm? That's, that's how you got the name? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Glasshouse PR. Yeah, yeah. I was like, that's it. So I ran to uh, Sharia House. It's called Sharia House. Mm, to register <laughs> the business. <laughs> to register the business name, uh, I think 800 uh, Kenya shillings. Um, and then that's how I started. Mm. Yeah. Mm. What has been the, uh, the, the growth journey uh been like for you uh it's been eight years of running the business right yeah what has that been like for you in terms of growth 
it was very interesting at the beginning um so how i uh, you know now i went back to the people i knew from uh, the smes i'd met in mm. bni uh, and I was telling them, you know, digital media is the next big thing, so I can do social media marketing for you. Mm. So I started out like that. And uh, I remember there's a guy the first month who would pay me like 5K per month. Mm. But I was like, at least it's my company. It's, it's, it's you yeah, know, it's your money. It's my money. Mm. <laughs> uh, yeah, and that's how it started out. Um, I, of course, I did a lot of... Um, volunteering mm. uh, with some people just to prove um, that you, that you can work. do the work because yeah. remember no one knows you in the industry mm. and then at some point I dropped out of Desta so I'm a I'm a drop out, drop but out. there are people who meet me oh we graduated together I'm like what <laughs> 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 uh, but you know I think for me I know God would have it like that mm. if he says I go next I, I can still go mm. uh, yeah so I had to drop out of this because um, I, I became too busy and I felt like they were not giving me like I don't know what they were teaching Mm. Anyway, that's another story for mm. another day. Mm. Uh, but still, the time I was there, there are people I met who are, who are instrumental in my journey mm. for uh, building the company. Yeah, um, yeah so started build, building it, doing a lot of volunteer work. I worked with a few artists mm. uh, and uh, just to position them in the industry or yeah. to do their projects. Um, then 2014, I think that was uh, very interesting. Mm. This is the story that is told in the media. Mm. I started the company with a laptop and 6,000 Kenya shillings. Yes. So this is what happened. So um, someone had given me a laptop. The only savings I had from this company was 6,000 Kenya shillings. Mm. And uh, they never paid. You know, I left. The way I left, mm. no one can even pay you. So it's fine. So mm. they never paid me any amount. So I had 6,000 Kenya shillings, which I bought a modem, mm. which didn't work in my village. Mm. So I had to borrow money for another modem. So when I had this modem, what I was doing was just social media marketing for the two one company I've met here and there who are paying me 5K, 10K. Mm. Um, then uh, I would do a lot of um, mid, uh, social media marketing for Glasshouse. Mm. So Glasshouse was very optimized and, yes. the, and the name looks really nice. Mm. So one day I get a call from Google and they're like, hi, that's like three, four months later. Mm. Uh, hi, I uh, would like to talk to Mary Njoki. I'm like, yeah, hold. Hold <laughs> for Mary Njoki. <laughs> <laughs> so you're your own receptionist. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm in the village. I forgot. I had to go back to the village yes, in Lumuru. Yes. So I'm in the village and Google has called and I have to be my own receptionist. So anyway, so um, yeah, so I they called me and then they said they want us to go and pitch. So I went and picked uh, some people from Desta, some mm. young people from Desta. We put our brains together. I told them from today you work for Glasshouse, you work for Glasshouse, you work for Glasshouse. Mm. So we went to we went to Google presented. We were shortlisted until the finalist. Mm. So um, when we were shortlisted, uh, they called me for a meeting. Mm. So they wanted me to meet someone who had come from Europe or something. So I remember I walked in and I could tell from the way she looked at me. She asked me, "You own this company?" I'm like, "Yeah." Mm. <laughs> mm. Uh, then they were like, "Yeah, we'll be paying you certain uh, certain amount in dollars." So I remember telling the guys, "You guys need to open dollar accounts. You know, mm. I'll be paying you in dollars." <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Two weeks, uh, then they told me they'll get back to us. Yes. So two weeks uh, passed and then um, they, they, <laughs> they called and then they said they've decided to give other PR agencies mm. um, space to, to come and pitch. Mm. So of course I knew we, uh, by then I knew we hadn't gotten the job. Yes. But for me, of course they Googled there like this company. I, I was not even incorporated, it was a business name. Yes. So there were many things at stake, but it also, there are things that we learned there because mm. I remember the lady telling me, you know, marketing and PR are different. Mm. In international companies, PR, this is how we look at PR, this is how we look at marketing. Mm. And now it will make sense to the story I'm to tell about 2014. So mm. 2014 comes and then we receive an email on info about from Facebook and they're looking for a PR agency in Kenya to do a few, to do a project, a four months project. Mm. And I remember, of course, I'm sure they sent to many agencies, but yes. I am not busy. Mm, you are available. <laughs> I'm there. I'm available, ready to reply to every email that come in. Yeah, so replied, of course, because of the... Of course, that uh, experience with Google was quite disheartening. Mm. I remember I slept for three days and I said, God, I'm done with this glass house PR. But after mm. three days later, <laughs> I resurrected. Yes. I was back mm. in business. Uh, so 2014... Um, an email come from Facebook and um, yeah, reply. They shortlist us. Oh, we get the job. I'm mm. like, oh, we're working mm. with Facebook. You actually got the job. Yeah, we got wow. the job. Uh, so worked. Google doesn't work. 
but Facebook, Facebook works. works yeah mm. so got the job with Facebook that was a, such a big deal because there are agencies in Kenya that have been there for 20 years we mm. were like 2014 we were like three years old mm. you know and they chose us so that was a big deal um, later a few weeks later we worked with uh, Viber I think they got us because they we you know we had this case study we had done for Facebook mm. Uh, yeah, so things just started opening up in terms of working with corporates, mm. but of course we still worked with SMEs. Um, I mean, there's someone I was working with who is a uh, who is a known musician in Kenya, mm. and he also introduced me to a lot of people in his circle, yeah. which was uh, which was beautiful. Um, yeah, then things just opened up. Mm. Started working with uh, the Ethiopian government. I did some work. We did some work for the Ethiopian government. A uh, team, a team started coming mm. in. Um, 2016, uh, I was shortlisted to uh, go and present. So remember, I love IT. Mm. So I came up with a system, a software um, that was shortlisted to go to America uh, to present uh, the PR software. Mm. It's not yet, it has not yet been done. Mm. I just did the prototype then. Mm. And I remember also that process was very interesting because mm. um, we went to this first of all when you're going for this uh conference you yeah. pay like ten thousand mm. dollars so they when they shortlist you they pay for you 99 90 percent so you pay like 10 percent mm. uh, and i remember i went to this conference and somehow uh chris Hacker was in the conference the guy who he had invested he still in, has invested in uber twitter and some other companies mm. so he he was in this hall and then he was speaking and then he said um, uh, he said that he wanted to, to sit next to a woman um, and everyone was screaming. Mm. <laughs> everyone right. wanted to sit with him. I want everyone wanted to sit with him and I remember I'd gone for this room to particularly take a photo of him. Mm. So he tells me to come on stage. I go sit on stage. I have and then I tell him I'm from Kenya. Mm. So I was like, oh my God, you're from Kenya. You came all the way. And then he, con he, he does a conversation about Kenya. And then, um, so he, after that, he calls me the backstage to take a photo with him. Mm. When I'm leaving the backstage, the media is there because they've never, like, I was live on you on his TV. Yes. And those guys are like, how was it to meet Chris Saka? Oh, my God. And, of course, I can't even explain. But mm. for me, the reason I'm sharing that story was I've seen God favor me mm. in a way that is different from in everyone else but mm. it also gave me it built my faith to keep trusting him in the journey mm. to keep trusting him that he's the one who gave me this platform yeah. and it's for him mm. so those are some of the stories that you know that contributed to the growth mm. yeah i worked with the ethiopian government which was another interesting story mm. um so yeah so far eight years eight years later Work, we've worked with real estate companies, we've worked with banks, mm. uh, we've worked with blockchain companies. Um, I've, be, I've been shortlisted for, we've been as Glasshouse, Glasshouse are, has, has received many accolades, I've received a couple of the accolades, but then coming to a place that those are not the, the, the things that define me mm. because of the foundation that I've been set by God himself, that mm. he's the one who who defines me, he's the one who gave me a platform, yes. he's the one who has taught me even what PR is all about or what entrepreneurship is all about. Mm. So it's every day trusting him and um, acknowledging him in mm. all my ways, mm. uh, including what I'm wearing today, like yeah. everything, just to, to, to have him have, have his way. Yeah. yeah. And I, I think um, what I like about your story is we see it was not smooth sailing. Yeah. There are many challenges that came yeah. and uh, the fact that we're able to see God's hand even in those, you know, little things. Yeah. There's probably someone watching uh, this right now. Mm. And, uh, you know, the theme this year is Arise and Shine. Yeah. Either they have an idea, they've had it for long, mm. they need to, you know, get into it, be mm. active about it. What yeah. would you tell uh, to such people yeah. to just move them from that place and uh, activate Isaiah uh, 60 verse 1 for their lives? It's very interesting. It's one I love that particular verse, and it means it means so many different things to me. Uh, but I, but I, I've come to understand when you know who you are in God, mm. it's inevitable for you not to. It's inevitable for you not to arise. Mm. Like you have to, to arise and shine mm. because your light you has no come. 
because your light is it's him he has come mm. so he's, you have life so you just arise and become everything he said you would become mm. i think everything even in our generation it goes back to do you know who you are in him mm. do i see myself accurately as he sees me mm. you know uh do i know who he is in me mm. because uh when those things are accurate these other things just fall into place yes. you're able to see as you see to hear as he as as he hear and i'll say like paul i've not yet what did it, paul said i've not yet uh um gotten it all mm, yeah. but i know um you know i forget that that the which is that behind and i press towards the mark of a higher calling mm. so i can say that i have seen everything i have not yet atti- i don't think and i love how hey god likes humbling me I have to share this. One day God told me Glasshouse PR could have existed without me. Mm. So I understand number one, I'm a steward. Mm. And then number two, I understand that um, without him, like I can't do anything. Mm. Uh, number three, I have seen his, his, uh, his, his footprints everywhere. Mm. Uh, so I can't, it's, it's just about him. So it's for all of us to keep um, uh understanding that our identity is found in him mm. yeah that's 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 it it's about continually don't let your past limit you mm. number one don't let people define you in a certain way um yeah so we keep pressing towards the mark of a higher calling wonderful yeah. you know from a young village girl who had to wake up at 3 a.m to make it for a 6 20 a.m meeting uh to becoming you know a person doing pr for facebook and for big companies for embassies it's just amazing and our encouragement to us is that we arise and shine for our light has come we hope this has been uh, of great benefit to you god bless you as you arise in the space you're in remember joki is reminding us you are never too young to do what needs to be done so arise and shine and step up in the space that you're in thank you god bless you